Tom here from FDS and uh, we are going to talk very briefly while the sun is still shining about the chrono setup that I use. Now I've been taking a lot of notice of other people's chrono readings because more people are starting to get chronographs so I applaud those people well done. And if you have the means to measure, you have the means to improve and we have the means to make all of our mods better which is a good thing. Now the chronograph is not the sole measure of performance and um, some people are into accuracy testing and we've seen lots of different accuracy tests including the Bay Area Nerf Pat um, and um, other people have mooted different suggestions at the moment I don't believe that that is possible without a fully controlled environment and you'll have to clamp the blaster in place you have to have a set distance you'll have to have no air movement we deal with very light ammunition and uh, any kind of wind is going to affect your dart unfortunately and obviously that makes it much harder to test. However, chronograph. I know a lot of people use different cronies. The F1 is one of the most popular cronies that people use and I've seen an awful lot of videos that people have done where they've shot indoors with the F1 crony or on the side on low lighting. And uh, I have to say that I always shoot outside and I always shoot whenever the sun is out with the diffusers on which this allows the eyes down here to see the projectile entering the test area and measure it more accurately. And um, if you don't have these on, sometimes it will misread against your sky and you'll get high readings. Now today I had a little bit of reflected sunlight from next door's window and I did get two 130 fps-ish. One was 133 and one was 130 across the chrono. Those are patently an overread and um, because I know the kind of area the data is going to be in when I shoot you can see it develop. My argument is this, if you have a chronograph and you're shooting inside the only way to standardize your measurements is to use the correct wavelengths of light for your chronograph to work properly. Now, um, don't use fluorescent lighting. That says so in the instructions. It's very bad. These chronographs are not a very complicated machine. Um, they only measure very, very simple things. They essentially are a photodiode at each end and it measures the time it takes for the projectile to travel from point A to point B and then it works it out. So if you're using a fluorescent light, um, it will actually measure the flickering like this of the fluorescent tube and you'll end up with uh, false readings. Um, I've seen this, I've seen a 5 kilo uh, recon shoot 160 fps. Now that's not right because it's measuring a light, so it's very, very plain. Um, and you might jump on some of those high readings and go, yeah man, awesome mod. And that's fine, but it's not true. If you're shooting inside, my recommendation is that you actually use these LED strip lights. When you look at the manufacturer's lighting kits, which can cost stupid amounts of money, all they are is a strip of LED lights, which you can have for like under $10 um, off eBay and you just need to put two strips on the back of your diffusers and then they run off a laptop PSU uh, or any equivalent 12 volt um, DC power supply and they work really well and the white, bright white or uh, warm white LED provides the right spectrum of light to allow the photo diodes to work properly. That's my argument about the chronograph um, and those of you who are getting these high readings, I'm sorry but your mod is good because you're getting some really nice readings when we look at your data you can see some lovely readings in there but you can't take those individual highs and say this is a 130 FPS blaster um, because it's not true. So if you're going to consider testing for comparative purposes, fine if you want to do some backyard chronoing, I get that. Lots of people like doing those. I do them all the time. I'll get out a stupid drain blaster and a five foot length of barrel and I'll go shoot some slugs and see how high I can get the reading. That's fine. What I am saying is if you're posting comparative data, have a think about your procedure try to follow a standard procedure. My argument is 30 darts fresh from the box minimum because that's a statistically significant sample. It allows error to not be measured. And then, like I said before, consider your lighting and your diffusers. And um, chronograph wise, this is a Competition Electronics Pro Chrono and the F1 ones are very popular. Now, the ballistic chronographs that you see for Airsoft, the shoot through chronograph, which has just got a little hole and you kind of shoot through the middle, those are not very suitable for Nerf because of the size of our projectiles. If you think about the tiny measuring distance that it's measuring over, a lot of those are this kind of size, and the length of your dart, the accuracy is not going to be very good. So you can't really compare. You will have to use one of the longer ones, I'm afraid. Uh, and until somebody brings out a really good home kit, there are solutions that people have made which have worked very well where they've used a fixed length like this. Um, but unless those are calibrated against a calibrated chronograph from the factory, you could obviously have some element of overreach. Take care of your measurements and then we can all be doing the same thing. You don't have to do as many darts as I do. I do 50 because I feel that it provides a much more real world test and you've got a bit of dartware to throw into the equation and you can see actually how the mod stacks up over a longer shoot. And as you saw with the orange Modworks kits uh, for the Retaliator, actually during that shooting process the barrel gummed up with foam residue and you wouldn't have seen that. If I just shot 10 darts over the chrono you would never have noticed that that fails. That's why I do those longer shoots. So just bear that in mind. 
and uh, we'll see if we can't improve the quality of the data that we're now collecting because there's some very, very good data collecting going on worldwide. And to all those people who've bought chronographs, I really salute you because it's a big investment to make for your hobby. And uh, I think that that reflects the change from casual firing down your basement to work out whether you've got a power increase to actually what would I would class as micro tuning where you stack gains up or you can actually prove when you've got a really good idea, you can prove that it works. So to all those people with chronographs, I salute you. Let's keep doing it right.